if you haven't gotten into this position yet, just try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who's there. You spent possibly as long as a year, possibly more, preparing yourself for your MBA program, taking your test scores, redoing all your resume and getting recommendations, writing essays, interviews. It's like a whole journey. And you put so much love and effort into those applications. And now, hallelujah, you got more than one success, but you've only got one life. You've only got one body. You can only attend one MBA program. That means that if you got into two schools or three schools or four schools, you're gonna have to say no to at least one other program that you've spent a year courting and probably, if you're like most people, falling in love with. If you've gotten into more than one school, there's a very good chance that you don't immediately know which one is the best one for you or which one you should accept. And it's an agonizing decision because this door leads to one life and that door leads to an entirely different life. This is truly a fork in the road and it's just a decision that provokes a lot of anxiety for human beings, very understandably. Add to that the guilt of saying no to a school that you spent all this time trying to get into. And then add to that the fact that no one can really have very much compassion for your situation because you're super winning. You got into more than one school. What are you complaining about? But look, I understand you. This is in fact the hardest part of the journey for our clients. When they get into more than one program, it's extremely difficult to close one door and walk through the other. So today I'm gonna to tell you how to decide. Hello and welcome back to MBA Monday. I'm Angela Guido, the founder of Career Protocol and the person who is gonna help you achieve your MBA dreams one video at a time. If you're new here on this channel, I sincerely hope that you're gonna subscribe and that you're gonna come back a year from now and need this video that I am recording today. Here's my three-step process to make the final choice. Step number one is to narrow it down to two schools. So you don't wanna be doing steps two and three with six schools or even three schools. If you got into three or four or five or more schools, work your way down to just two. That step should be reasonably easy. You're gonna pick your two favorite schools or the one that's highest ranked and the one that you actually like the most or the one that gave you the most scholarship money and the one that's highest ranked. Get, boil it down to two. Get yourself into a position where you're really only deciding between one program or another. And then let the other ones go. Send them a note, say thanks so much. I've made other plans. Free up those spots so that your many peers who are on the wait list have a chance to gain admission to those schools. Just let them go. Now you're down to two. This is a big decision. And I really recommend that you make this decision. This is gonna sound very cheesy for being on an MBA channel. But I recommend that you make this decision with your heart and not with your mind. I say that because, uh, first of all, all human decision making really comes down to emotion. That's how we organize our brain in the first place. But if you think about what it means to make a decision with your heart, with your feeling, with your body, with your intuition, you're naturally gonna be incorporating a lot more information than just the mind can hold. Your mind thinks in linear ways, pros and cons, yes and no. It's quite digital, it's binary in the way it approaches decision making. And even if one school has a giant list of pros and the other one has a short list of pros, your heart may tell you that that second school is really better for you because of the intangibles, because of the way you felt when you were on campus, because of the way you envisioned your life and it made you feel happy on that, on, the, on those campus grounds with that group of students. So you're gonna make the decision with a lot more information than just a pros and cons list. But step number two 
is to write the pros and cons list. You still want to let your mind do its job. And as you're doing all this research, I really encourage you to visit campus, Ideally, go to admitted students weekend and meet your future classmates. For a lot of people, this is decisive. When you meet the people that you're gonna be sitting in class with, if you feel a resonance with them, if you like them, if you feel excited that these are gonna be your peers, that alone potentially contains all the information you need. In my experience, when people visit campus and they participate in admitted students weekend, the decision frequently is made right there. They know the right answer because of how they felt with their classmates. This was also my own experience. I was on four wait lists when I went to the Booth Admitted Students Weekend. And after, even though I went to Chicago kicking and screaming, after I sat in class, met my classmates and envisioned my life in an apartment in Chicago, I knew that Booth was the place for me and I took my name off almost all the other wait lists. So talk to people, meet your classmates, visit campus, do all of that research. If step number two doesn't solve it for you, so if you do all of that for both schools that are on your list and you're still not sure, you're still not sure which school is right for you, then you wanna do step number three. And step number three is a little hack I learned many years ago to trick your mind into being quiet so that your feelings can tell you the true answer. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna flip a coin. And you're gonna convince yourself, you're gonna pretend, and this kinda only works once, so you really gotta do it right. You're gonna pretend that whatever the coin says is what you're going to do. So if you're deciding between Booth and Wharton, you tell yourself, if it's heads, I'm going to Wharton. If it's tails, I'm going to Booth. And that's that. The coin will choose my destiny. Then you flip the coin and you see what the coin says. Let's pretend it lands up heads and it says, you're going to Wharton. Now in that instant, pay attention to your feelings. How do you feel? You've just committed yourself to going to Wharton. Do you feel excited? Do you feel a burst of energy? Maybe a little bit of nervousness could feel a little bit like fear, but it's like, excitement, it's a positive feeling. Maybe you even feel relief. Notice if it's a positive emotion. If it's a positive emotion, then Wharton is probably the right school for you. On the flip side, maybe you feel a negative emotion when the coin tells you to go to Wharton. Maybe you feel deflated or suddenly it got a little dimmer in here. The world's a little bit smaller somehow. Or maybe you feel deep anxiety within you at the decision of going to Wharton. If that's the case, then good chance that Booth is actually the right program for you in this coin flip scenario. So obviously the coin is not gonna decide your destiny. It's there just to help you listen to the complete person that you are, which includes your emotions, it includes bodily sensations. It's not just purely the realm of what your linear mind wants you to think. All right, that's it. That's the three-step approach to deciding which MBA program is right for you if you've gotten into more than one school. And for those of you who are new, for those of you who are just starting your MBA journey, stick with me. I'm gonna help you achieve your dreams one video at a time. Right here on MBA Monday, I'll see you next week. Here is my three-step process. <laughs> Always three steps.